Hi, you're listening to Life and Faith from the Centre for Public Christianity. I'm Justine Toe. And I'm Simon Smart. Well, Tim Winton is one of Australia's most beloved writers. An acclaimed collection of his short stories, The Turning, has been adapted for the screen. And it's brought together, I guess, the bright lights of Australian cinema, people like Kate Blanchett, Hugo Weaving, Rose Byrne. And one of these stories um, in this collection of short stories is a tale of a woman coming to faith and experiencing new life in the midst of a terrible situation. Now, Simon, I've heard you call this moment one of the great conversion narratives of all literature. And we're going to hear from you shortly about whether the film lived up to your expectations in that regard. But first up, I know that you're a massive fan of Tim Winton. You would have really been looking forward to this film. I uh, really was. It's an exquisite piece of cinema and fans of Tim Winton will be rushing to see this, I imagine. So they're picking up on this uh, collection of short stories, The Turning, which was written a few years ago now. And in the film, three hours long, uh, 17 different stories, with each with a different director, different actors and so on, and, and told from their particular perspective so it's a it's a really kind of great cinema event I think there's an interval in the in the showing and you get a big book and so on it's a it's a really uh, focused celebration of Tim Winton's work I left them twisting turning the light desiring this man's gift and that man's scope I no longer strive to strive towards such things because I know that time is always time, and place is always and only place. Because these wings are no longer wings to fly, but merely fans to beat the air. Although I do not hope to turn again. Although I do not hope. Although I do not hope to turn. Do you feel that that sense of occasion and that big kind of event that, that's been built up around the film, does that speak to the reverence that people have uh, for Tim Winton's work? Yes, I think it does. He's, he's very, very highly regarded both here in Australia and internationally. There's something absolutely Australian about his writing, and yet somehow, it doesn't always work this way, but it connects overseas as well. Uh, but he, he certainly is rooted in the land and, in the, and among the people of Australia, and you, you get that in the stories. It tends to divide people. You either really love Tim Winton or... Well, you don't. I I'm one, I'm, <laughs> well, or you just don't go for it. I, I'm, it really works for me, though. I've heard you say that um, his writing is really evocative and that it's particularly suited for cinematic treatment. Did you find that when you were watching the film? I really did. It's one of these rare occasions where, as the filmmakers have put together their depiction of the story, in most cases it, it, it reflected my own imagining as I was reading. So I think Tim Winton's work lends itself to this. It's so uh, pictorial. It sort of gives you this sense of the place. You can smell the smells almost as he's describing them. It's a real gift. Uh, he does it with really spare writing too. It's not overly elaborate. And I think that gift of being able to put you in that situation, connecting with the place as well as the people, is one of the reasons why it, it's an easy conversion to film. The Turning is a unique book, you know, on one hand it could be described as a book of short stories, but on the other hand, as Tim talks about it, it's a novel in parts. There are some threads and some connections, there are thematic links, um, but it is 17 chapters of a story and it posed a kind of unique challenge for us, you know, how do you adapt a work like that for the screen? How is it put together? Are these all disconnected short stories or they are joined in some way? Right, there's 17 stories and um, they are linked, although they're, they're discrete stories, but quite a few of them, not all, are uh, linked together by a common thread. So, for instance, one of the characters, Vic Lang, uh, appears in, at different ages and stages of his life um, and also his life's viewed from a diff different perspective. So one of the stories is told by his wife uh, in a troubled period of their marriage in middle age. Other times you're seeing him as a kid. So, yes, that, and different characters characters reappear in different stories. So there, there, there is this sense that, yes, that you, you're reading something that fits together, even though some of the other stories are completely separate. And you've said that The Turning features one of the great conversion narratives of all literature. What makes you say that? Yeah, I think I've, I've heard someone else say that and I just really agree with it. Maybe I'm getting a bit carried away, but it's certainly a fabulous story of, of really conversion to 
Christianity, the turning. The, you know, it's like here's the moment of turning and turning to God in this case. And the story is a, a really powerful one, Justine. It's got um, uh, Raylene, who's a woman living in a caravan with her kids and her really violent cruel husband who's becoming increasingly so as he as his life kind of goes badly in his career he's a fisherman uh, he just gets more and more into drugs and alcohol and he's, he's just horrible to her but while this is going on she comes across this couple uh, the woman's name is Sherry who's briefly at the caravan park until they can move into their house uh, they've moved from the city to this country town and there's something about this woman that's really appealing to to Raylene. She's non-judgmental. She's a great listener. She's uh, someone who really she comes to love, and she's drawn to not only her as a person, but what she seems to have. It's that sort of classic idea. When she discovers it's Christianity that, that's made a difference to these this couple's life, she's really annoyed. It sort of frustrates her. It's not what she expected at all, and she has this sort of interesting reaction to it and wants to sort of reject it reject her for that reason but slowly and over time she gets more and more drawn into not just their lives but the story that's that's uh captured them and given them so much hope in their lives so how does that play out especially when it when it comes to her own terrible situation how does that faith sort of affect her well it's um i'd say it's a gradual movement towards understanding uh, who God is, understanding grace, understanding the hope that the Christian story brings her, even and especially amidst a, a, a terrible personal situation. So without giving away the plot, uh, as things get worse and worse for her, the, the hopefulness that the Christian story appears to offer her uh, seems more and more real. And you get to this point where even amongst the violent, brutal treatment of her husband you sense that he as a character is diminishing and becoming smaller and less significant while she's growing as a person and that that no matter what he does to her there's a sense of protection around her essential being and that she's there's a line there that says she's she's already outlived him and uh, I think it's a really really powerful beautiful story uh, albeit said in a very gritty pretty serious situation for her yeah I think that um, often we can start to think that faith is just this feel-good add-on to your existence that it kind of just sugarcoats stuff but doesn't necessarily deal with the difficulty and the harshness of life but the kind of story that you're talking about it really confronts head-on that sort of messiness of existence it does and you won't get any sentimentality or from Tim Winton's writing it's very very much set amongst very ordinary people who you can really relate to and people who are entirely believable characters full of flaws uh, weaknesses uh, things that rather weren't true about them there's a, in Tim Winton's writing and his characters there's a lot of um, failure and disappointment and maybe that's one of the reasons people get a bit turned off it for me though what you see is when you look hard enough, you'll, and certainly in the turning you'll see this, the redemptive aspects of the story are all the more greater because of the fact that it is set amongst very realistic, gritty, raw experiences of human beings. Oh, no. No. It's easier than getting a tap. My name's Sherry. Ray. Hi, Ray. We're moving into a... House up the hill. Just waiting for the kitchen to be down. Are you staying in White Point for good? Yeah, Dan's a new manager for the depot. Now, Simon, the, the sort of spiritual undertone that you're talking about that The Turning has, is that something that often crops up in the work of Tim Winton or is it something that he just kind of deals with periodically? Mm. It's not overt. Uh, he's not... Um not someone who's sort of putting in a whole lot of stuff about religion or faith, really. But there's a spiritual aspect to just about everything he writes. I would say that um, because of the fact that he's dealing with great themes of, you know, as I said, redemption, but grace, failure, the need for forgiveness, human cruelty, um, and even among people who are deeply flawed characters, often there's, there's sort of redemptive elements to that. So I think they're just picking up on big theological questions all the time. The other thing about his writing is there's a connectedness to the land. He's brilliant at describing um, landscapes, but 
also the connection of the people in the landscape. In a sense, there's this sort of um, almost indigenous character to this, the connection between the land and the people. And I would say place matters a lot in Tim Winton's writing, and I think it matters a lot to people. So, yeah, there is. Sometimes it's um, it's uh, spoken of in ways that are really unconventional, but I do think, like, for instance, it's sort of almost a magic realism, although he would avoid that term. But, you know, this kind of, in some of the writing, think of the writers, Cloud Street, there are moments where you're not sure are we dealing with a dream sequence here or a reality, what's going on. Um, there's a pig that talks, for instance. Um, so there is that, definitely those sorts of spiritual elements to it, even though it's not overtly Christian in any way. Well, I, I was reading an interview um, that Tim Winton did with Rachel Conn from The Spirit of Things. And, I mean, he's a Christian, Tim's a Christian, and he said that his early understanding of God had actually matured as he'd gotten older, that it was less and less this sort of identikit, in his words, um, picture of God where he felt like he could pin him down, and more to the kind of feeling that he says Wordsworth talks about in the poem Tintern Abbey. Wordsworth, and this is Tim Winton talking, talks about feeling a presence which disturbs you with joy in the sense of interconnected things and the spirit of things that's rolling through everything. Now, the way that he puts it, it's quite beautiful. You know, is there a presence of God that's rolling through everything? And is that, is that kind of what you get a sense of in his work, in that sense maybe of that connection to place and that, um, that kind of spiritual quality to what he's writing about? I, th- I think it is. And, and I don't remember a time where Tim Winton had an identikit idea of God in any of his writing at least. Uh, it's never been neatly packaged in any sense. But very much that description is a really nice one, sort of rolling through everything and disturbing your imagination with joy. That is a, and you know, not surprising that he described it that way, way, but it does capture, I think, a lot of what you get in this writing and the stuff that you could describe as connected to faith. And then I realised I'd been six months without a drink. I woke up one morning, it was winter. The sun was on this fallen tree, this dead grey tree, and there was steam rising off the dead wood. And I felt new. I had this feeling that the world was inviting me in, you know, luring me towards... something, I don't know, life, I suppose. Now, Australia's a really secular country, very resistant to belief, not really interested in matters of faith. And yet Tim Winton is adored. You know, we can't escape that. Is there a connection there, do you think? You know, I mean, has he found a way of talking about faith that can connect with people? I think he's popular just because he's just such a good writer. That's that's the bottom line. People love it because he's a great writer. Um, One of of Australia's best, I would argue. Uh, The fact that he's been able to, it it gives him permission to, uh, because he's so good, to be able to talk about these things that matter. But see, I would argue that the sorts of things Tim Winton writes about, as well as lots of other people write about that who, who have no faith, when the great literature is picking up on these big themes of, of human existence that are inescapably theological questions. And the fact that, that Tim Winton has had a, a Christian experience in faith uh, is kind of infused into his writing in a way that's so unforced and natural and authentic that uh, for me it's one of the really powerful things about his writing. Simon, Tim Winton's quite a divisive character, isn't he? I mean, he's a Christian, but he doesn't necessarily write in a Christian way. It's not necessarily neat and inoffensive. It's it's quite gritty and real and raw. Yes, and so he... He doesn't make it easy for you. I, I keep saying there's re, there are redemptive aspects to his stories, but you won't find it easily. You have to look for it. But I think he kind of wants to wants you to do that because he thinks that's probably what life is like. You got to look for the, uh, the if you, if I can say it in a kind of religious terms, look for the glory. It's not going to burst out. I kind of think there's a, a, a similarity or a connection with the sorts of characters and storylines that Tim Winton comes up with. So it's probably divisive in in that sense in that people sometimes want more um, triumphalist stories with happy endings and clear winners and losers, but you, you don't get that. Uh, what you get is real life, uh, but still with, with kind of beautiful language and great characters and sometimes hopefulness that sustains you uh, even at the end, even when you're feeling a bit beaten up by the storyline. It's great to get your thoughts on The Turning, Simon. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Are the friends of fly-